Hey, so Vappy, the voice API, just released a brand new exciting update that allows you to directly integrate with Go High Level calendars. Not only can you query the calendar for open slots and book appointments, but you can also query existing contacts and create new contacts without the need for workflows like this. Some of you, if you've been following this channel for a while, you've seen me create workflows like this inside of N8N in order to accomplish these tasks. They're no longer necessary if you are using Vappy's direct integration into Go High Level. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Justin, and I like to create content just like this. I have a free school community called Automation Station. I'll leave the link down below. If you feel so inclined to join, please go ahead. Also, hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment if you found this valuable. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because while the integration was released, initially we found it in the school community, reported on it before the documentation was produced. We had a heck of a time trying to get it to work. And even after the documentation was released, I still had some difficulty getting it to work. So I wanted to make this video to make sure that you can get this to work as well. So I'm gonna come over here. I'll leave the link to these documents in the description below. But essentially, these documents were really helpful. It goes through and it walks us through exactly what we need to do to make all these tools work. But what I like about these docs in particular is they give us a an example prompt to follow. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this example prompt. We're going to go into the voice API dashboard, and we're just going to start by creating an example assistant. And forgive me, we're going to jump around a few times here because uh, we still have to integrate Go High Level. We have to create the tools. We have to assign the tools. And so I'm going to try to do this uh, as efficient as possible. But if I hop around, I'm sorry, I'm a human being. So we're going to go ahead and create an assistant. We're just going to name this YouTube GHL demo. I'm just going to create a blank template because I'm going to use the example that they gave me inside of the documentation. So I'll just click this copy button here and paste. And so if we review this, let's see if I can expand this really fast. It says you're a helpful assistant, yada, yada, yada. It goes through, it tells the assistant exactly what its goals are tells it the flow of the conversation and the order of operations that are expected to happen on a call. And then it also introduces introduces some guidelines and the tool functionality and the tool name. So what we need to do next is first and foremost, let's publish this. So we just have a very basic assistant here. What we need to do next is we need to integrate our go high level. Now, this is the first section, the first part where I was having issues. Okay. Before the documentation came out, if you scroll down here, the first time go high level, you have this legacy go high level connection here. And honestly, I think they should remove this, but maybe there's functionality that I don't know about that this serves. And right here, it asks for an API key. So naturally what I did was I went into my go high level sub account. I created a private integration. I tried using that API key. I tried using the version one API key and I just couldn't get it to work. And so if you have an API key in here right now, and it's not serving any purpose inside of your system, I would just delete it because it could cause issues because I've also seen where I've had this API key configured and then what I'm about to show you configured and it caused issues. So if you scroll down just a little bit lower, you see this other section where it says go high level. Confusing, right? Go high level. But this is the one that you want. Now, before you click connect, before you click connect, it will be helpful for you to actually go open a new tab and go to app.gohighlevel.com. Even if you are on a white labeled plan or if you have your own agency, log in to app.gohighlevel.com first because this is going to pop open a new window to install a marketplace application inside of your agency. And if you're not logged in, it can cause issues or it can ask you to log in and you'll just redirect a bunch of times. It should work, but sometimes it doesn't. So I found that if you just log into app.gohighlevel.com first before you click this button, then it's just a whole lot smoother. So I'm going to go ahead and click connect because I'm already logged in. And you'll see here that it's asking me if it's okay to install this application. And Vappy created a direct integration with Go High Level. And so you can see what the what uh, permissions we need. It's probably sub-account permissions here. And so I'm okay with that. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And then it's going to ask me where I want to install it. So I have a demo account here that I'm going to install it on. And it's going to be the Lead Brain Coaching demo. So I'll just go ahead and click that. And what's super nice about version two apps or go high level integrations is that all the work is done. There's no workflows needed to make these two things talk. Vappy has the information it needs from the back end, and Go High Level has the information and the permissions, has granted the permissions to Vappy in order to accomplish its goals. Cool. So we are connected at this time. So if I scroll down, I should now see this with a big red disconnect button. We're not going to click that because we want to keep it connected. So let's come over here and go to tools. 
and we are gonna create new tools, scroll all the way down to go high level, and they have them all organized under here. So we're just gonna go ahead and create all four tools. So we'll just go ahead and create that. We're gonna leave it as default. I'm gonna explain why in a second. I'm gonna, some testing I did actually revealed some interesting behavior. So I just went ahead and created all four tools and I haven't changed anything yet, okay? But right here you see you've got the go high level MCP contact get tool. It's actually not named. I don't think the prompt has it named that way. If I come over here, contact get, it's not using MCP, but now it's using MCP. So VAPI rapidly releases changes, just go high levels. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rename these so that the naming inside of my prompt is actually consistent with what the tool is actually named. So I'm gonna save this. Now, onto the description. Normally, I put descriptions in tools. However, when I did it this time, I actually broke the tool functionality and I'm gonna tell you why. So up here in a documentation, I noticed that it said, where is it? Where did I see description, description? Right here, for each tool, provide a clear descriptive name. Adding a description is optional. Eh, maybe not. If you leave it blank, VAPI will automatically generate a default description that explains the tool purpose and includes the current date formatted using the time zone tool in, specific, in the specific tool's metadata. I tried doing this myself. I tried providing the current time variable like I normally do in my prompts to this tool and it broke it. It just kept giving me random dates in 2023 or months that are like months in the, in the past, months in the future. And so when I removed the description for all the tools, specifically get open slots and book appointment, it started to work. So whatever VAPI is doing on the back end, they actually tell you right here, they show you the code and the descriptions that they're using, it works. So I wouldn't add a description for these tools specifically. Now, Contact settings, metadata, use customer's phone. So use the phone number from the current conversation to get the contact. I like that. If it's a phone call, I think using the phone number is a valid way to search contact. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Now we'll go on to contact create. Let's see how they named it in their prompt here. Contact create, we have contact get, and GHL contact create. So I'm just gonna copy that and paste that. I'm not gonna add a description, and then we will use the customer's phone number in order to create the contact. You can uncheck that, for example, if you wanna ask for an email address and you wanna create the contact using the email address and not the phone number, that's optional, you can uncheck that. Next thing we're gonna do is check availability tool. Let's see how they referenced it here. GHL underscore check underscore availability. So I'm just gonna go ahead and name it that. And right here is the description box that I was telling you about. Just leave it alone, because if you change it, maybe you can get it to work, and if you can, that's awesome. You share in the comments, but I couldn't get it to work when I put my own description with my own current time variable. So I'm just going to leave it empty. Now we need a calendar ID and the time zone is optional. I'm going to go ahead and provide a time zone, but let's find our calendar ID. So inside of our Go High Level sub account, click settings, go to calendars, and I'm just going to pick a random calendar here. I have buyer client calendar listed. So we're just going to go ahead and use that, paste that calendar ID. And then for time zone, I'm just going to use America, New York. I do believe this is case sensitive. There's a specific standard for these time zones. I think it's IANA. I forget the name of the standard, but they're standard. But I'm going to use American New York. But then again, this is optional. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that. Next thing we're going to do is the create event tool, otherwise known as create appointment. And let's see, what did they name it in here? create event, GHL underscore create underscore event. So I'm just gonna paste that. Again, I am not gonna modify the description here, but I do need to provide a calendar ID. So I'm gonna make sure I copy the same calendar ID as I used in the query open slots and save it. Now, I wanna highlight a limitation of this in current moment. So right now, VAPI can only connect to one sub account per organizational space as I see right here. If I come into external providers and I scroll down, I don't have an option to connect to multiple sub accounts. So I think that's a key limitation to, to this system as it is. And it might force you to go use N8N because the use of N8N doesn't require you to integrate Go High Level directly, which means if you have multiple N8N workflows, you can have multiple tools calling different workflows or webhooks. And so one organizational space, let's say you have 10 different clients with 10 different sub accounts, you'd be able to support them and you might need to use, uh, you might need to use a, a solution like N8N. And another limitation that I see is that, and it's not really a limitation, it's just going to get cumbersome, but if you have multiple calendars, let's say you have, you're servicing a nail salon and a nail salon has multiple service calendars. They have manicure, they have pedicure, they have massage, whatever it is. 
you're going to have to create a check availability tool and a create event tool for every single calendar. And so that can become cumbersome to manage, especially because there's no folders here in the tool section. And the calendar ID cannot be a variable from what I've seen and what I've tried and testing. So those are two key limitations that you're going to have to consider before using this direct integration. But for the most simplest deployments of this function, these tools will work just fine. So recap. We connected our Go High level, we have our tools created, and then we have a base a base of our agent created using the documentation that they provided here, the prompt and the documentation. Now we need to assign the tool to the agent. So I'm here in the YouTube Go High level demo that I just created. We're gonna come over to tools and then I'm gonna select tools and make sure I assign all four tools to this agent. Here we go, we've got get contact, create contact, check availability, create event. I'm gonna go ahead and publish this. And at this point, this should work. And so I'm gonna go ahead and test this and I'm gonna turn my volume up, volume up so you can hear. Let me go ahead and just click talk to assistant. Hello? Hey, I'd like to book an appointment. Absolutely, I'd be happy to assist you with that. Can I have your full name and email address? Justin Melendez, and my email address is support at leadbrain.io. Give me a moment. It seems that a contact already exists for you in our system. Let's proceed with booking your appointment. What date and time do you prefer for your appointment? Do you have anything for Monday afternoon? Hold on a sec. On Monday afternoon, May 26th, the available slots are 1.30 p.m., 2.30 p.m., 3 p.m., 3.30 p.m. Okay, I'll take the 2.30 p.m., please. Just a sec. Your appointment has been successfully booked for Monday, May 20th, 6th at 2.30 p.m. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like assistance with. That'll be all. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. So that was pretty smooth. We're going to actually check if those actions were actually accomplished inside of the CRM. Mark here, whatever this name is, sounds very unsure about his appointment booking. So I don't know that I trust it, but let's come in here and let's see. It did say that we already had an existing contact because I was doing some testing earlier. What I did notice is that whenever we create a contact based on the email, because I was doing a web call, I didn't have a source phone number. And so it asked me for the email address. It was also in the prompt asking me for the email address and it created it using the email address. But if you notice, there's some type there's a tendency to have typos here. This is justin at leadbrain.com. Maybe I said that, I don't know, but I said I thought I said leadbrain.io. But if I come over here to calendars appointment view, I can see, I think I asked for a 2.30. And so Justin Melendez, which is the contact that it found in the CRM, if it didn't find it, it would have created it using the tool that it had. It booked an appointment on the calendar. So it actually worked. Now, I wanna show you a quick tool. So if you come down here, we ended the call. We can just click on view call logs, or if you've exited this by mistake, you can actually just come over to, I think it's observe. Yeah, observe call logs. And then that last call that we had, we can just click in here. And you can actually go to messages and see the messages that were sent. And if you just use the control F and search for tool underscore calls, you'll see every time a tool was called. And so the first time a tool was called here was to look for duplicate contacts. Notice I didn't name it get duplicate contacts, but it has its own naming convention on the back end. And you see it passed in my email address to query for existing contacts, which is a function that I created also inside of my NADN workflow that we no longer need, right? This search contacts function, it's automatically doing that for you, removing complexity from your system, which is always good. And you come down here and you notice that there is a tool result right here and this tool result returned a contact id which is exactly what we need to book an appointment and told us a contact exists and now if we keep scrolling we see another tool call when it was get free slots so when i said get free slots it automatically converted our start date and our end date to epoch time in milliseconds which is what go high level needs in order to provide you with open slots if you come into go high level i'm sorry into n8n this right here we were doing all this just to format the information to get it to go high level in the correct spot so you just remove all that complexity which is awesome and you see the slots were returned it started to rattle off a bunch of slots that's something you can probably fix in prompting say hey only suggest one or two slots say it this way but 
The important part is that the slots were returned from the calendar, which is very helpful. Now, if we keep going and we come down to this tool call, you see we created an appointment. And if you come into our N8N workflow that we no longer need for simple booking, you see we did all of this just to end at creating an appointment, which is awesome. And we came over here, you see the appointment was created. We had the appointment ID or the event ID and everything was good. We checked our CRM and it worked. So I think that this is an awesome update. It wasn't exactly straightforward to learn how to do it. So I hope that this tutorial helps you just a little bit. There are no handouts for this tutorial. Everything that you need is inside of the documentation. I'll put that link below. But if you found this valuable, again, if you're not subscribed, subscribe and then join the Automation Station free community. There are a ton of free resources in there, a ton of N8N templates that I give away. And it is a highly engaged community. There's over 1800 members who are highly engaged in AI and voice and automations. And so I think that you would find it helpful. Till next time, peace.